Guys, welcome to this bonus episode of Pop Kitchen. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't listened to 122 already, we reviewed uh, Mother's Instinct yes. and Monkey Man. So yes. go and check that out if you haven't already. Today, George is going to be reviewing Ambulance, a Michael Bay film. Un film du Michael Bay, Ambulance. Yes. I just want to briefly say that... Um, we caught up very briefly about things that we'd watched and I I caught I, I ended up on Netflix watching like the first 40 minutes of The Martian. Mm. And that film is so easy to it's watch. Watchable. It's so watchable. And I was equating it down to, you know, it's very well made and it's bright and it's lots yeah. of different characters, but it's got lots of great short scenes that layer over yeah. each other. Obviously I've not uh, I have seen the film twice. Uh, that's like my sort of two and a half time of seeing it. And I'm like, oh, this is so easy and so watchable. It was on that thing on the Netflix where it was the first thing on my homepage and started playing. And I was like, yeah, I'll put this on. Watchable is such a good quality in a film that's often overlooked and it and can actually be an insult. You go, oh, it's, it's watchable. No. But actually sometimes you're like, oh, that's really, it's really watchable. Yeah. I would also say uh, Independence Day. I, I caught like the yeah. last 40 minutes of that recently. And I was like, this is so watchable. And Jeff Daniels is just so, w- w- Ooh, Mark Watney. Robert, Robert Downey, oh, you do, no, Jeff yeah, Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Yes, just, you sound a little bit Robert Downey. He's yeah. doing these press conferences and. <sighs> he's got, he's, he's always slightly. <sighs> no. Will you be resigning, sir? No. <laughs> um, Mark Watney. But this is going to be a different episode because it's more of a casual chat because, you know, James and I go and see new releases yeah. every week, right? Yeah. We do that. But it's nice sometimes when we get a bit of chance. It was the Easter weekend. Yeah, it was. We go and watch older films, Just films we might have missed. Flick something on. So I've got two films. I've got Ambulance, which came out two years ago. And I've yeah. got Copland, which came out 27 years ago. Yeah. 25, 27 years ago. Let's begin with Ambulance. Before you go into Ambulance, yeah. I first became aware of Ambulance, <laughs> uh, you know, trailer marketing, whatever. But there is a huge... Uh, use of FPV drones oh, yeah. in that film. And oh, yeah. like I watch a lot of uh filmmaking YouTube like gear reviews and drones. And like I I really admire what FPV drones do for like a very specific use case yeah. of like soaring through cliffs, landscapes, all of this stuff that really sort of gives you that literal bird's eye view. Imagine a bird was soaring. But all in all I find it to be like horrendously distracting and has very right. little use case for like proper commercial branded work. Like often for a drone you want to replicate a helicopter like steady yeah. still yeah. easy to sort of understand landscape and i remember seeing like shots and like these filmmakers talking about the incredible fpv work of ambulance and i just remember thinking this looks fucking awful it may it not in terms of the quality of it but just in terms of like it makes me feel sick and it doesn't make sense for a camera to swoop to um, such an extent you would you would be changing your opinion if you saw ambulance because it was awesome oh the drones james were they brilliant ever you I don't know if Michael Bay got given a drone for like a birthday present or something, <laughs> but like what a great manna from heaven moment where it just falls into his lap because that is it one of the highlights the of the film. Then I take it all the back. swooping. <laughs> Look, I'm surprised it's not being worked into the next Transformers when uh, Megatron and doing it. But anyway, I'll leave okay, it with look, you. Look, so let's just, uh, the reason I watched Ambulance is because um, when it came out, a lot of talk was, was sort of given to the fact that Michael Bay was no longer making films about Transformers. He was making, in what for Michael Bay is quite a stripped down movie about <laughs> four characters in a vehicle mm. for two and a half, well, you know, a bit shy of two and a half hours. Um, it's got a very, very 90s feel about the yeah, whole thing. Speed. It is like bank heist, high speed car chase. And I said, uh, I put this on Letterboxd, but it's basically like, Michael Bay took the OJ Simpson Bronco chase, mixed it with Keanu Reeves' speed, speed. then stirred in a bit of GTA V <laughs> and uh, with a little bit of Die Hard thrown in. And that's what you have. And it's very LA. The film actually begins and it says LA. And then the LA becomes Ambulance. ambulance. <laughs> Okay, so here's the, here's the premise. It's good fun to talk about if you haven't seen it because yeah. I tried to describe it to a friend yesterday and they were like, what? Okay, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II plays a great name, by the way. Okay. Um, I also really like him as an actor. Yeah, he's, he's a really great presence. He's a vet, a veteran, can't get any work, got a baby. <laughs> I really, I really pictured the other kind of vet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just imagined him just holding a kitten, no, driving it no, down no. the highway. He's a he's a veteran uh, who's struggling financially. He's got his brother, brother, your know, spiritual brother of of Jake Gyllenhaal, who is a super slick crime guy who's very good at robbing banks. At one point, an FBI agent says, do you know who that is? And it's like, that's Jake Matthews. He's robbed 37 <laughs> banks in the past 10 years. Go arrest him. And I'm like, yeah, if you know that, why isn't he arrested? <laughs> anyway, Jesus Christ, it's, it's Jason, Jason Bourne. Bourne. Also, it's Jake say, Matthews. It was Easter Sunday on an afternoon. I really needed a movie like this. And I want to just say, like, yeah. I had, for the most part, a fairly, fairly decent time with it. It's yeah. a pretty batshit film. But anyway, so... 
So he's, his brother's Jake Gyllenhaal. He goes to Jake Gyllenhaal. He's like, man, I need, I need, I need a job. I need some money. He's like, well, you're in luck because we're about to pull off the biggest bank heist you've ever seen. And he's like, no, no, no. I just need like a normal job. He's like, no, no, no. We've got an armored car ready to go. <laughs> you mean and someone who's just existing at life in a completely different yeah. sphere? And funnily enough, we need a driver. Well, no, not even a driver. We need a guy like you to hold a gun and come in and do crowd control. How does that sound? And, the, and he's like, okay, I'll do it. So they go to the biggest bank in LA. They, you know, it's very slick. They drive down, they get inside, all that stuff. And then it just cuts to these two cop characters who we've never seen, who are in the middle of a conversation. And this cop is saying to the other cop, oh, wow, well, you were really attracted to that bank teller, weren't you? And he's like, yeah, man, I was really like, I felt like chemistry, but I didn't say anything. He's like, we, we need to take you back to the bank so you can go back and speak to that bank teller. So he spins the car around. And he, while he's doing this, by the way, he references the Michael Bay movie, The Rock. He's like, right. you know, Sean Connery says that line in the movie, The Rock, um, you know, winners stay at, losers stay at home, winners get to fuck the prom queen. That's what you've got to do. And I'm like, Michael Bay? You can't what? reference yourself. You can't yourself. reference your no. own movie. That's such a like, put your head out your ass. You can't like put yourself in pop culture in that way. And yeah. so it'd be like, well, of course they'd be talking about a movie of mine. They put up outside the bank and he's like, we're just going to be like bad boys, okay? And I'm like, bad boys, another Michael Bay movie, what? right? It is a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm, so I'm like, two, Michael Bay dropping two references to himself. Just like, okay, self pleaser Anyway, cop, one cop goes in, the other cop right outside. Cop goes in to smooth talk the, the bank teller. Little does he know, Jake Dinnerhall's playing the manager and all the people behind the desk are actually got guns pointed at them from underneath the desk. He tries to talk to her. Um, basically things kick off the thing goes awry huge shootout at the bank lots of um, sis secret um, police agents turn up because they were trying they were planning they were you know tracking the heist guns shoot out people run over by lorries people explosions guys with big guns going boom 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 and it and it ends with uh, oh wait, well, sorry i haven't even mentioned the other plot that's colliding with this so you have this huge bank heist happening concurrent to this you have isa gonzalez in a ambulance being driven by her new co-worker she's the emt the paramedic working in the back and the film begins she's like oh we've got a call and it's like yes a child has been impaled and i'm thinking what what a horrible place to begin this movie and she turns up at this horrific car crash and there's a child in the back seat and this car has gone through um like metal railings and this metal railing is poking poking through this child and this child who i think would probably be dead it's like help help and she's like you're gonna be okay we're gonna do this we're gonna support you know medical jargon medical jargon yeah. emt blah, 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 blah. and they managed to get this kid off this pole and take her into the hospital anyway they're around the corner shit kicks off the police guy who went into the bank who gets taken hostage by jake jindal he gets shot the the paramedics turn up to to save the cop jake jindal and the guy poke around the corner hijack the ambulance kick the driver off and managed are able to leave the scene because they're in an ambulance, right? They right. flee the scene. So that it's the, it's Jay Gyllenhaal, Yaya Abeldeen the second, and Isaac Gonzalez, and this wounded police officer in the titular ambulance. Pretty soon, the police are like, "Wait, that ambulance has the guys in it." But they're yeah. like, "Wait, we can't shoot the ambulance. We can't stop the ambulance because there's a, there's a wounded cop in there, yeah, and she's yeah. trying to save his life." So, th so that's why I said that the O.J. Simpson Bronco chase thing is there because they're just kind of following the ambulance yeah. without ever trying to stop it. Um, that's the basic setup. It's it, it's pretty ludicrous. James, there is a bit, I was trying to describe this to a friend yesterday, where this is about an hour into the movie where she just realizes that the cop has another bullet wound and has just been bleeding out. I mean, he would be so dead, but like, she's like, oh my God, she like rips off the jacket. We've got to save him. And like, um, yeah, 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 Bultine's character jumps in the back. He's like, I'll help you, I'll help you. And um, she's like, he's the bullet's in his spleen, but I'm not a surgeon. I left, I, I had to quit medical school because I was addicted to speed. <laughs> you can just imagine the writer going, speed. Yeah, yeah, it's literally like, I think it'll be speed. And I was like, okay, but you managed to still qualify as a paramedic. So she, then in the back of this you know, ambulance that's going 60 miles an hour, she FaceTimes her ex-boyfriend who is a surgeon and, she, and he's like, wait, what are you talking about? Wait, the thing in LA, that's you? She's like, yeah, I need you to help me um, sew this guy up and get this bullet out of his, um, his spleen. He's like, let me conference call in my other surgeon friend who's on a golf course right now. So you've got these two surgeons on a golf course, her ex-boyfriend who's a surgeon on this other side, who are FaceTiming her on this, I guess, medical issued laptop that you get in ambulances. And 
she's like, I have to get the bullet out of him, but we're out of anesthetic. <laughs> and so like, she literally like puts her hand in his gut and opens it like that, right? And then he wakes up and he's like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And she's like, her hands in his stomach. And they're like, you need to knock him out. You need to knock him out. So Yaya just fucking punches the guy and knocks him out. He's like, he's out cold. Anyway, they're like, can you get to the spleen? Can you get to the spleen? Meanwhile, the battery's running low on the FaceTime. Oh and they're like, God. you need to pull the bullet out of the spleen, but don't let the spleen rupture. If it ruptures, he's got 60 seconds unless you clamp it. So it's really tense. The ambulance moving. She pulls the bullet out. She's like, I got it. And then the bullet, the, the spleen just explodes. Like, oh. like a blue just like, spoilers <laughs> yes yeah, so, oh sorry yeah. I mean, this is a spoiler filled conversation yeah. and they're like oh my god his spleen's ruptured and the surgeon's like wait 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 and then the, the, the FaceTime goes dead the battery goes dead on the of laptop it does. and they're like what do we do what do we do and she's like wait they said clamp it I've got a clamp hair is clamp. he still not dead <laughs> yeah. and she, she she takes the hair clip clamp clamps it <laughs> on his spleen and then like sews him up and there's a point again this, this does have spoilers there's a point later in the movie where he's like this is like three hours later he sat up in a hospital bed and he and he's just like that's the man that saved my life and i'm like you you would sue so, you, so, you would not be no. able to talk you would not be able like the bruising the trauma you've gone the through. blood loss oh my goodness yeah and she's just like hooking him up to um one of the uh, one of the bank robbers to like uh, get the blood and i'm like but that guy's gonna need like a mars bar soon you can't just take his blood and not have him right a stick of gum to like keep the, <laughs> keep the skin together that's the kind of oh um, bad shittery that we're dealing with this but Fucking amidst hell. all of that you have swooshing drones does it make sense like does it does that camera movement feel i don't know disorienting no it feels Rest. really good it work, i think it it's it's so fluid it yeah. just goes because also you know michael bay is a big fan of the whole spin around yeah the parallax the parallax that he does that several times but and then he does that with drones and it's actually i have really? to say there was just a couple of times i thought that was really great camera work yeah. i i liked it okay um it's nuts it's bonkers it's a bit too long but if you like a very 90s very cheesy stripped down for michael bay but while he's experimenting with Fact, new technology what you just described is stripped down yeah. michael bay is astounding <laughs> i know that's i mean i have spoiled a, major, a middle point sequence for you there I but think like get it. i think yeah, yeah the film's been out two years um ambulance ambulance that's it because they drive an ambulance <laughs> <laughs> and you've got, I think we should oh forever man. refer to that film as Ambulance. Ambulance, Ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is Ambulance. If you've seen Ambulance and you and you liked it or, or disagree or think it's a, a Do you masterpiece, think like the LA Film Commission or whoever sort of did that, like really. Oh was, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Ambulance. It's an but LA. It's, we're in LA, baby. You. This oh, is an LA Ambulance. I bet they were like, here are all the tax co tax cuts we'll give yeah. you. Here's a scenic tour. Of, I, I felt like we'll I, I film I, on the highway, but it's Ambulance. And I, I saw a lot. Of LA, I saw a lot nice. of LA, and I was like, I feel like I got to the aqueduct visit. up near the airport. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's GTA Five. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah. I was like, this could be Los Santos. Yeah, Amber Los Santos. Amber Los Santos. Anyway, that was very fun to. It's quite fun to watch, and yeah. it's very fun to talk about. That and I, I don't think I've seen a Michael Bay movie in a long time because I just avoided Transformers. Yeah. I haven't seen Pain and Gain. I've seen Pain and Gain. It's a very macho, very orange saturated. Yeah, I didn't see 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi no, either. I see that. And now, can I gear change? To yeah, film? gear change. Yeah. So, so that was a crazy, silly, you know, what? And then I actually watched a, like a, a, a really overlooked, I kind of feel like seemingly forgotten movie yeah. called Copland. Have you heard of this movie? Uh, only recently because okay. you mentioned it. So it's on Netflix in the UK at the moment. That's why it, it struck my attention. So directed by James Mangold, who I recognize the poster. Yeah, uh, James Mangold, a, 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 a kind of one of the, like a solid director. He's yeah. directed, you know, in the early nineties, he did things like this. He did Girl Interrupted. He also did Walk the Line, Logan, Ford v Ferrari, mm. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. and he's got Wolverine. something else. Wolverine. He's got some other something else big coming up. He is. He, he's basically a big director. They, people yeah. give him big projects now, but this was his first. Actually, I think his first major work with a lot of major talent. So, Copland. Um, are you, are you reading the plot? Or should I tell you? No, no, I'm just, I'm just putting up the thing. <laughs> um, so, Copland is a movie, get this, starring Robert De Niro, boom. Harvey Keitel, boom. Great. Ray Liotta, boom. <gasps> Sylvester Stallone, 
boom. And then there's loads Titans. of people in it who are like just so 90s. Like yeah. you, you might not know their names, but when you see their faces, like Michael Rappaport or Janine Gruffalo, like you're just like, oh yeah, I've seen that guy in loads of 90s stuff. Robert Patrick, who plays the Terminator, oh, yeah. the yeah. villain Terminator, Terminator 2, so he's yeah. in this. Gr- great. He's got a mustache. He's so sleazy. Yeah, so 90s. So um, it's a really, it's like a really solid crime you know, this is the kind of crime film, and it's a kind of film that, like, I watched it with my parents that they would really enjoy, and they'd never heard of it. And I watched it, I was like, why Why did we forget this one? So, basically, one thing I've never always... I don't, we, I don't think we appreciate or quite get as uh, Brits is the American system of law enforcement, how an area will have a sheriff's department, and then above that you have the kind of wider, like, metropolitan area will have police, and you've yeah. got state police, and then you've got FBI but they all have different jurisdictions. Because right? a number of times they're like, you're no longer in control of this situation. Yeah. FBI, yeah, exactly. you don't have clearance yeah. to think. Whereas like in the UK, like police, you obviously have different police yeah. forces for different areas, but it's like they're, they're, they the can work together. They, 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 they appear to us as one entity. Yeah, they are all one entity, yeah. right? But you have this really specific uh, set. Hang on, wait. Yeah. But it's a really, really interesting plot where it's about New York cops who have deliberately done overtime. So, so the, sorry. It's about New York cops who aren't, you're not, as a New York cop, the premise says, you're not allowed to live outside of, of New York, right? Right. But what these cops have done is they've, unless you're a transit cop, only a transit cop is allowed to live outside of New York because they're, they're doing, you know, sure. yeah, tra- 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 transport and that stuff. But then what these New York cops did is they re- they did overtime at in the transit department, which means that then they could be registered as auxiliary transit officers, which meant they could live outside of New York. So what this is about is like a little cop haven that sprung up in um, in this town called Garrison in New Jersey. This is not a true story, but this is the premise of the, the, yeah. the, the, the film. So all these cops get to live in New Jersey, away from the, the craziness of New York, but they are kind of also away from the jurisdiction of New York. So you have this sort of little enclave. It's full of cop town. All the cop wives live there. And they all gather at this cop bar called the Four Aces. No civilians go there. It's just all cops. And the sheriff of that town is played by Sylvester Stallone. And he is a guy who desperately wanted to be a cop for all of his life. But he, he had an accident when he was younger, a heroic accident but he damaged his hearing in his left ear, mm. which means that he, he can't qualify for the force. So the best he can do is be a sheriff of this cop town where mm. nothing really happens, him and two deputies. Um, and he's like, he's, he, I have to just say, Sylvester Stallone in this movie is probably the best I have ever seen him. Yeah. I don't think I would ever have necessarily equated him with a good performance. He, he's, yeah. he's someone who carries the weight of being Sylvester Stallone with him everywhere. He's great in Creed 1. Yes, he's, he's good. I mean, he is, he's doing the big thing and he is rocky in that movie. He is still big. I mean, yes, he is good in that. Yeah, he's got cancer and he's like, oh, he yeah. brings another weight to it, which I thought was really good in Creed 1. Yes, but I think other than that, I would never really associate him with actually like getting into a role. In this, yeah. he's he's great. He really plays this kind of like wounded bear who's lumbering around this town. He's really sad. He really feels like a puppy. You kind of want to go, oh, I'm, mm. I'm sorry you didn't make the force, chief. That's yeah. really sad. Anyway, he's looking after this town. Meanwhile, um, Harvey Keitel it like runs this cop town and uh, his nephew is involved in an altercation literally on the bridge to New Jersey. So it's right on the borderland. And he gets, uh, there's this massive scuffle about whether the police are planting evidence and these two people get killed. This huge scuffle. And then seemingly um, Harvey Keitel's cousin, uh, nephew, kills himself by jumping off the bridge. Except he didn't jump off the bridge. Harvey Keitel made people think that, and what he was actually doing was squirreling him away to New Jersey to keep him safe. Oh, wow. Right, so there's all this stuff. And this kicks up a whole lot of flurry. Mike, um, Robert De Niro comes over from New York to Sylvester Stallone and basically says, I don't have any jurisdiction here, but I work for internal affairs, which obviously means he's keeping check on the cops himself. He's like, you're like the sheriff of Copland here. It must be hard. But you need to let me know if you see anything that, that is suspicious. So on the one hand, he's got Robert De Niro telling him to do the right thing. On the other hand, Sylvester Stallone is desperate to be in with the Harvey Keitels mm. and, and, you know, the, the Robert Patricks. Also thrown into this mix is Ray Liotta playing fully coked up Ray Liotta. Yeah. You, know, like, what, you know, when Ray Liotta, I mean, I, I'm so sad he's died. He's, yeah. he's such a great actor. So good. His bulging eyes, sort of coked out face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a great bit where he has a fight with Robert Patrick involving a dart. And it's just like, it's really sort of, oh God. Yeah. Um, he, he um, Ray Liotta's sort of there. He's kind of been being pushed out of the action. He's kind of uh, coked up and he's a bit of a loose cannon. 
And you kind of have this pot boiler. And I was watching this. I was thinking, I'm, I'm quite into this. The, the, also, Sylvester Stallone is fawning over this, this wife of one of the police officers who he desperately cares for. And the police officer she's, she's with is a real dirt bag who's also corrupt. And I was like, this is good drama. You have corrupt cops, which is already a good premise, in a tucked away town, overseen by someone who worships cops, wants to be a cop, but can't be a cop themselves. You've got the tension between the fact that it's technically the sheriff's jurisdiction there, but all of these cops are more senior in the city. Like this, the tension between the two law enforcements. Um, and it plays out in this really satisfying way. And in the last third, it kind of becomes a bit like a neo-Western, where you get this sense that Stallone is the last, last sheriff standing against a corrupt, mucky town. Um, it's re- I, I, it was re- I was really impressed. Really yeah. solid, good 90s crime thriller with great heavyweight actors, lots of familiar 90s faces. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't scrimp. It really, it really sticks to the landing. A good... There's kind of a climax that is really that, that is that is shot and um, the sound design is done in a certain way to do with like Sylvester Stallone's hearing. That's really kind of interesting. I, I think it's a really solid movie. Nice. I think it should be mentioned in the same breath as kind of the other crime yeah. films of the '90s. But for some reason, isn't so. I guess because because it's not made by Scorsese. Or, yeah. But, but it has all those ingredients. Also, if you've ever seen The Sopranos, like. 10 people who are in The Sopranos are in this movie. Oh, nice. Just like yeah. wandering around. Classic but it's made just, just before it. So yeah. I'm like, if you like New York, New Jersey set crime thrillers from the 90s, this is for it's you. Straight the street. Oh, nice. Great recommendation. You know what's a really uh, funny but interesting Ray Liotta performance is in the film Wild Hogs with John oh, right. Travolta and um, Tim Allen. Oh, yeah. I think, I think Martin Lawrence, is it? And William H. Macy. Yes. Yeah. And um, he, it's sort of like he, Ray Liotta plays the aggressive, violent head of a biker gang, mm. and they're like middle class um, yeah. bikers. But it's very Disneyified, so he's not swearing or yeah. he's not really violent, yeah. but it's all implied that he's really dangerous. But it's actually a very like funny but memorable Ray Liotta performance in that film. Yeah. It's like it, the, the film is soft around the edges, but they got the hard guy yeah. who actually plays <laughs> those actual roles to be in it. It's just, it's just really make me, reminded me of that film. It reminds me that I think the Ray Liotta's casting in Marriage Story was brilliant. Because oh, yeah. he's got the sharp eyes. Really, yeah. you know, the, that is a stupid question. Do yeah. not talk to me about that. Yeah. I am $700 an hour. Yeah. Do not ask me stupid questions. If you have questions, ask him. He is $400 an hour. So good. Um, I, I, I can't even close to afford this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been told that I need to watch Black Bear on Apple TV+. I've Plus, great which things, is, yeah. Taron Egerton, Paul Walterhouse, and Ray Liotta. I've heard it's fantastic. Yeah. So slightly slept on series that a lot of people have said is great. Yeah, so slept on series and a slept on film with Copland there. So there you go, yeah. uh, uh, um, an American movie double bill, ambulance and Copland. Guys, that was the bonus. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Don't forget, if you haven't listened to 100, 100 episode, 122, go and check that out. We'll be back next week. See you next week. New episode's Wednesday. See you next week, <laughs> My brain's melting, I'm done. Bye. Bye. <laughs>